Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize. Ross, introduce the guests. We have the bad boys from Monaghan. We have the McKenna brothers. We have Aaron and Stevie. Guys, how are you doing? All right, keeping good. How are you? Yeah, yeah can't great. complain. Can't doing complain. Faz, I have to, I have to make this mention because we forgot to do it at the start of last podcast. We actually made over six hundred euro from November. We got like another hundred euro after it was over. So like people are obviously like holding out for that Christmas pay packet, and then they were like, you know what? We'll give some money to the lads. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure the lads when they win this weekend, they'll uh, they'll send on a, they'll send on that winning paycheck, that knockout <laughs> paycheck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so but lads, yeah, Ross. Go on, I was going to say, tell us the story. What's the plan for the weekend then? Where are we going? Who are we fighting? Yeah, we're fighting over in Worcester. It's in uh, Redditch. Uh, both of us are fighting on the same card. It's on on Friday night, so we're heading over on uh, Tuesday morning, and then we get into the hotel. We go into a bubble. Uh, we're staying there but we have no confirmed opponents yet we're still waiting on confirmed opponents so uh, we'll know within the next day or so you're, you're still you're still, both, you're still both waiting for it yeah 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 nothing's been confirmed yet and how hard is that now to train knowing that like you might not actually have a, an opponent yeah you can just keep training away like normal you know you have to be ready for anyone more more used to you know, opponents pulling out at the last minute and that, so you have to be ready for anything. All styles we're ready for. We just work on everything in the gym, and then once we get our, our opponent named, it's just, you know, it's go time. And Stevie, is that a Manny Pacquiao hoodie you're wearing? Yeah, it's, oh, no, it's a wild card. It's Miguel Cotto. Oh, Miguel yeah. Cotto, okay. I wasn't too sure if that was the Panama press or the, Puerto Rican. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, yeah, it's Puerto Rico. Oh, that's class. And uh, guys, we'd be amiss not to discuss what's hot in boxing right now. Tell us, what were your thoughts on Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr.? Yeah, it was, it was a good fight for their age. Like, I, I didn't expect Mike Tyson to be that good for the age he is. And I thought he was better than what I thought he was going to be. So, yeah, it, was, it attracted a lot of fans too. So, that's good that was, all them pay-per-view fights that Mike Tyson's still bringing in. It's absolutely crazy, isn't it? Like, people just absolutely adore him. Even his podcast is blown up, like, all his merch. I actually bought one of his T-shirts as well. Just to, like, just everyone's in awe of him. Yeah, there, yeah. there'll never be another Mike Tyson again, like. Yeah. And, that, and that's sort of the thing I was going to get to, you know what I mean? Would you guys be interested in getting one of those Mike Tyson cards, you know what I mean? Because it's such a spectacle and it get, brings so many more eyes to the sport. Oh, definitely. Who wouldn't want to fight in a Mike, Mike Tyson card? Like, a, it's everything strange, you know, even to be on the same card as Mike Tyson. But it was, it was good to see him back in the ring. Yeah, he was very good, you know, for someone that's been out of the ring 15 years. It was, he was in some shape. So he wasn't, he, you know, he has that killer intent. But it, it was good to see him and Roy Jones, you know, share the ring again. Oh, well, for the first time. Would you, would you like to see them again? Because uh, there's talk now of like, like uh, Mike Tyson potentially fighting Evander Holyfield. Uh, talk of Roy Jones Jr. now boxing Anderson Silva. Like the, the, the combat sports world is just completely blown up, especially with Jake Paul now supposedly bringing in like half of those uh, pay-per-view boys. Like, would you like to see them back in the ring again? Yeah, uh, Mike Tyson. I'd like to see Mike Tyson, like just the exhibition type ones. Yeah. You no, know, not professionally, but I'd still like to see him fight away. In exhibitions because it's always going to be exciting seeing Mike Tyson in the ring. Yeah, I think who's, it's, who's like I think it's the Mike Tyson thing, Ross, isn't it? It's just like oh, definitely. You just yeah, want to see like, him, like, <laughs> yeah, but like it's even the name is like Mike Tyson. Like he's yeah, a lot of people tuning in just, just to see him. Like you know, it's, no matter who you are or you know, everyone's a big fan of Mike Tyson. And regardless of his record or how he finished his career, like he'll always be known as the scariest fighter to ever step foot in the boxing ring. Lads, who, yeah. lads, I'm going to ask all three of you. Uh, we'll start off with you, Stevie, and then, then you are, and then you, Baz. Who would you like to see Mike Tyson fight next, and why? Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to call like, who, who would like to see. Maybe Holyfield again, see what Holyfield's like. You know, it'd be interesting to see, but you never know who he'll fight. And any of them heavyweights will be looking to make a return, you know, to get their name out there again and you know, be fighting again. So... It's any fight to see Mike Tyson in, it's going to be exciting. What about you, Aaron? I think, yeah, Holyfield or Cannon Briggs. Oh, you, can't be, you can't be copying, you can't be copying Stevie Lee. Like. <laughs> uh, I said Cannon Briggs though as well, but uh, I think the build-up for that fight would be on yeah. 
Let's go, champ. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think that's actually a better show, Shannon the Cannon. Yeah. yeah. That, after giving Aaron a bit of stick saying you can't pick the same one, you can't then back on and pick <laughs> Shannon the Cannon Blue. Oh, I like it. I'd like to see him fight Francis and Ganu from uh, who fights in the UFC. That would be. Uh, oh yeah, that'd be good. That would be good. He's trying to yeah. talk it over now, and it's it's funny as well because like Dana White's starting his own boxing promotion as well. Uh, like I'm not too sure yeah. how far they're in there. That there there's the potential matchups are unbelievable. Just not even just Mike Tyson, but like even the younger fighters as well. Like even for you lads, you're over there. You're gonna be over there again now, uh, and like you could easily get called up onto one of them cards. Especially being like oh, a, a, especially being like a duo, you know. Yeah, it'd be deadly there. Getting the same card as any um, legends. Yeah, because um, we had we had uh, Dean Barry on our show last week. He just signed with the UFC, and like they they love the Irish thing. They just love it. So like, you lads are Irish. It's almost like the golden ticket in a way. Yeah. I can't believe no one asked me who I want to see Mike Tyson. Oh, sorry, Ross. Who, who would you like to see, man? Who would you like uh, to see? You know what I'd love? I'd love to see Mike Tyson versus Lennox Lewis, the rematch. I think that oh, would be a good scratch. one. Yeah. Good yeah. Good well, lads, tell us. Jake Paul, you probably you probably saw the fight. Do you think his boxing skills are legit? Because he slowly but surely convinced me. Now, I'm not saying he's up at like your guys' levels, but for a YouTuber who's taken boxing on for the last two or three years, I think he's got frighteningly good in that short amount of time. Yeah, well, for someone that's only been boxing two or three years, he's 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 good. Like he's he's a decent fighter. He has a bit of power in his punches, so he definitely is like good for someone that's only really an office in the game. But you know, it's it's it'd be dangerous for him if he were to fight real professional fighters. You know, it'd be a, a step too far. I think he's all right fighting other YouTubers and that. But if if he steps up and fights real real fighters, I think he'll get hurt. But it you just can't like turn pro over two three years and then you know fight these guys. These guys have been training their whole life. So, uh, but he he does look good. He's you know for someone that's two years in the game. What about you, Aaron? What do you think? Yeah, the same. He's a uh, he learned a lot quick in them two or three years that he's been training. But I don't think he's at the standard where he could fight professional boxers. You know, even any type of professional boxer. I think he should just stick to fighting other like people like himself who's only been training a year or two. What do you think of him versus maybe Dylan Danis? I don't know if you know who Dylan Danis is, but he's a jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner and he fights MMA in Bellator. His stand-up isn't like amazing by any stretch of the imagination. So do you think he could mix in there with an MMA fighter who isn't much of a striker? Yeah, I think that would be maybe a well-matched fight because Dylan Danis isn't really a boxer. He's a uh, martial arts, so well, haven't seen much of him boxing wise, but I think it'd be you know a well even match on paper, you know, uh, with what the uh, Paul has did. It, it would just be it would just be like such an interesting spectacle. Like everyone is obviously on their own journey. There's no there's no real like right way or wrong way. Like as myself and Russell learn doing the show, there's mm. you, you learn every day, you learn every week, make things better, just improve, improve, improve. Like, Jay Paul obviously has, like, 20 million subscribers on YouTube, so he brought a massive audience to the game. You lads, like, moved over to L.A., you know what I mean? Like, Dylan Moore now is training with Conor McGregor. Like, it's just, like, everyone goes on their own journey. So, like, it's, it's – for boxing itself, I think it's great to get extra eyes on it, you know what I mean? Uh, like, for instance, say if you were on that card, both the Perrys, you both got knockout wins, you'd have more eyes and you'd have more fans, more followers, more money, you know? Yeah. It's always good to bring extra fans to sport. You know, it's it's going to bring even more, even young children and all into it, and mm. make them want to start boxing. He brings a huge fan base for a lot of young and teenagers into it, so it's it's good for boxing as well. Yeah, but even the way your lads are styled, the way you you go straight on the front foot and you you almost like you're so close to to, to your opponents, it's like such a like deadly way to fight. You know, I mean, some people aren't as impressive. Like for instance, like Badu Jack had a had a massive opportunity there last week to go out get a knockout, and everyone would be following him. But he went to decision, you know, like uh, like the way you lads fight, it's it's a uh, it's very very special. Yeah, yeah as, as we call it, it's it's a bit of an assault, Baz, isn't it? It's it is. Lads I, fight. It's I, assault. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, it is assault. We've been co- like commenting on all your posts, just being like the way you get in, you just drown the opponent straight away. No, what like if if anyone's watching this now and they're lined up to fight you, they're probably like. <clears throat> think I have COVID, lads. Like, 
<laughs> yeah. We always go for the knockout. If the knockout's there, we'll, we'll go for it. You know, we're not really interested in going the distance because you never know what will happen in there. You can get a cut or anything. Anything can happen. So if you get the opportunity to take them out of there, do it. Get yeah. them out of there. So, guys, what do you think is the trajectory for you now? Like, um, is it next step, like a European title? Um, is it, you know, an American title? Is it a world title? Where do you see your next two or three fights going? Well, after this fight, early next year, I want to stay as busy and active as possible and try and get as many fights as I can over in England or here or wherever it is. I'll take them uh, before we can go back to America. And then by the time we get back to America, oh, I want to be fighting the likes of the world champion with Golden Boy, Patrick Dixera. That'd be one of the easier fights to make, so I want to get up to that level. And what about you, Savy? Yeah, I want to keep busy, keep fighting. I have back-to-back fights here now, uh, 11th of December and December 18th, so it's a busy two weeks ahead. And uh, I want to keep fighting and hopefully push by the end of next year into the top 15 world rankings. And take it from there. You'll know, take every fight as it comes. But I, I want to just keep winning and doing it in style. And Stevie, as me and Bar- Barry were alluding to, like, well, you as well, Aaron, you go in there and you like, blow people out of the water. Do you ever feel like after you're done, like you weren't actually satisfied? As in, like, you didn't get a fight that you were looking for, and you're almost like, I should probably fight again next week because <laughs> I didn't actually land the glove on me. <laughs> I'm always happy to go in there and get the knockout. Any, any fight camp buy you up to 150 rounds of sparring, so I'm getting plenty of work in the gym and getting unbelievable sparring, especially when I was in America. I'm getting the experience in, in the ring, sharing it with world champions, so going into the ring and fighting, I just want to you know, go for a knockout or you know, do it in style, and if it happens in the first round, it happens. You know, I, I'll take it. Lads, what, what's it like being like sparring partners with each other, like pushing each other every day? I, just, I saw you put a clip up when you were like running up the stairs, up to the and then like that was really grass. cool, boss. Oh yeah, was so this, cool. I think that was a shot with a dr- shot with a drone. It was just what's it like ha- having each other to like just go go for, and become as good as you, uh, as great as you can be because like obviously certain people don't have siblings or don't have close enough friends and obviously due to COVID people would have been training about themselves but you have each other like I, I bet you like if you set the alarm for 6 a.m stevie aaron set the alarm for 555 you know i say you're always trying to beat each other and everything eating the cereal like it's like oh you finished first yeah it's great that we have each other in training and um, we push each other on a lot whether it's in running or strength work and even boxing and we always try and get the edge in each other we're, we're really competitive uh, no matter what we do and even we're very lucky over the lockdown that we could work with each other you know where you couldn't travel to any gym, so we are fortunate that we got to uh, spar with each other. You're literally blessed, lads. <laughs> I, I was actually, I was watching on Instagram, you guys, with the medicine ball, and you were, like, thrown at each other. <laughs> <laughs> there was no love lost there between the two. When you're doing, but I, but I, I was looking at the two of you, and, like, physically wise, I think you're actually both in the best shape of your career. Would you agree? Yeah. With that? Yeah, and getting stronger and stronger, both of us, even since my last fight, I feel like I'm hitting even harder. I've worked extra hard in the gym. We uh, came back after the fight and we've been non-stop training since. And uh, as a fighter, we're getting better and better as well. So it's, it's going to be exciting now next week to see both of us live in the, the same show and uh, for everyone to see what we can do. Yeah, we'll be making sure to promote everything. Well, that's just a couple of more questions before we let you go back to the medicine ball. Um, <laughs> what... What what why do you love boxing so much? Because obviously you like your your passion for it is, un, is undeniable. Like what is it about boxing that you love so much, uh, Stevie? We'll let Aaron go first. Uh, just uh, I've been boxing ever since I was six, and that's what I grew up loving and watching. And my father used to box as well, and then my granda boxed, so it's, boxing's in our blood. And then uh, the first day I was in the gym, I just loved it. And, when I got in sparring, that's, I knew that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> Hit people in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I know over how it feels. Years. I know how it feels. Yeah, over the years then, I knew early that I wanted to turn pro. So I turned pro when I turned 18. And now I just want to become world champion. Stevie. Well, and you can't copy him, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot, a lot of it's the same. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, we live and breathe boxing. It's all, all we know. You know, it's like our... Our dream job, and uh, we're doing it. 
but we want to become world champions and that's in our goal ever since we are uh, you know, like eight years old. This is all we've been doing. And we have our gym here at the house. We have everything here for us. We're very blessed to have everything and uh, it's going to be you know, an exciting journey and we, we love it. And Steve, you obviously, uh, and Aaron, uh, obviously you guys train over in America under the tutelage of Freddie Roach, one of the best, if not possibly the best boxing coach of all time. Obviously, he won't be able to make your guys fight. And obviously, he's probably doing quite a lot of isolation. He's got underlying health problems. But how in contact with Freddie are you these days? Yeah, we uh, keep in touch with Freddie over FaceTime and that. I'm doing a few interviews as well with him. And Freddie can't wait to see us again. Uh, he's really looking forward to having us back. Yeah, we, we, we love Freddie. So we do. he's a great trainer and he's learning us so much. And in a few years' time, it's going to show through how good we're going to get with Freddie in the corner. Yeah, Stevie, Stevie said to us, next time we're going to have to get Freddie on the show as well. That'd be unbelievable, Ross, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah it would. Lads, Definitely, we'll get him on sometime. That's just a, another question, right? What, uh, I'm gonna, this is a question for both of you, so this time, Stevie, you can go first. Stevie, what is it about Aaron that makes him so good? And then, obviously, Aaron, what is it about Stevie that makes him so good? So, Stevie. Um, I think he's a very smart fighter in there. You know, he's, he's very tricky. You know, he's, he can fight in the inside and he can box long. And he's, he's a hard puncher as well. So, overall, he's, you know, a great fighter. So, he's, even sparring with him, he, he's very uh, tough to figure out. He's always switching things up and he's constantly making you think. But, overall, he's like a world-class fighter. Aaron? Uh, yeah, Stevens. Uh... A really good fighter. He's got that great attitude in the ring. He always has that intent to hurt you, so you can't switch off at any moment. And he's a real good rangy fighter. He's also a real good boxer. You just haven't got to see it yet because he's took everyone out so quick. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Baz, one thing I, I was just sitting here and I was thinking, how much does Aaron look like a young Johnny Sexton? He does. He does. Yeah. People have been saying that. We've heard that one a lot of times. <laughs> and then, lads, a very important question. Now, this is very serious, right? Very Which serious. Which one of you guys is better friends with Kendrick Lamar? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, both of us are good friends. On I see he's uh, he's uh, doing a concert in Dublin next year, so hopefully we might see him at that. You know, for still yeah, who knows? Maybe you'll do a bit of shadow box on stage for. <laughs> yeah, we might get in the stage with them. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. That's, that's great. And lads, just for you, let you let you go back to things. Who is going to end up getting the the other one a better Christmas present? I don't know. Uh, probably in sparring, you know. <laughs> get a get a fun shot. That's all we'll give each other for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Will they be sparring on Christmas Day? Now, after our fights, we'll, we'll take a week or two off you know, for boxing. We'll keep running, keep our strength work up. But uh, after our fights, uh, we'll take a week or two off from just boxing and concentrating on our fitness and our strength work. And then in the new year, get straight back into it, straight back into the training. So, guys, this weekend on this Channel Friday. 5. This Friday. This Friday, Channel 5. Do you know the time you guys will be on it? Um, not too or sure. Not closer to the date. Yeah, we'll know maybe on Thursday. Yeah, we'll know on Thursday. We'll post updates as well on the times and everything. Graham, we'll make sure to share all that and let everyone know when to watch the yeah. boys. Uh, I have Channel 5, so Baz, you can call over and watch the boys absolutely unload. And <laughs> one, one final question before you go. Who's going to get their opponent out of the ring faster on Friday? I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we both get them out. As quick as we can. But uh, <laughs> we'll see. It's all in the night. You know, anything can happen. So we'll see. That's brilliant. Lads, thanks a million for coming on. Stevie, you're, right. a vet you're a veteran on the show now. Aaron, <laughs> welcome to the team. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, lads, make sure to like, share, subscribe. And as always, stay energized. So, Ross, the McKenna brothers, what do you think? Yeah, two lovely fellas. I do think it's mad that they don't know who they're fighting. Uh, yeah. This weekend already, but that doesn't seem to phase them. And I'm sure whoever it is, they're just going to go in there and smash them one way or the other. So that just seems to be like the, their thing. So yeah. they're on a sort of steady rise. So uh, I don't know. I'm just happy to be along the, the ride for it, to be honest. Yeah, because I feel like they're sort of 
you'd, you'd almost say unknown because obviously like Dublin is such a bubble and they're up in Monaghan and then they're also in LA. So like, I don't think like a lot of like yeah. people who follow us would, would have really know them, but like it's good the way if they come on our platform, people will be more aware. Just cool. Yeah, 100% supporting the Irish. And then on top of that, I do feel like in two or three fights time, you know, people then start to very much so take notice them when they start competing for those European titles or even if it's UK titles. Um, one thing I always do think about them is because they are off in LA, they're a bit off off the scene. Yeah. But at the end also, of the day, time, time difference as well. Time difference is massive, but that talent will eventually shine through and those guys are in there and they go in for the kill every single yeah. time. And that fighting side is what people love to see. Yeah. And like, I, I, I didn't mention it, but I was I, like, I, it, I was planning on asking, and then I forgot. But uh, I like the way they, the Irish boxing scene, the way like um, Tiernan is training with them, and then like mm-hmm. Dylan Moran's training with them, and it's just that uh, they're all helping each other rise, you know? Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah, but I think they, they don't need to fight each other in their career, so they might as well help each other train. And yeah. They can learn new techniques and new training methods off each other, so I like it. It'd be funny if they neither of them got opponents and then they had to fight each other. <laughs> <laughs> I I somehow doubt seeing that happen. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. But but here, uh, this weekend has a massive fight. It's got one of the, the big, I'm going to call it the big two heavyweights now. It's got AJ. It's got the other side of uh, the Tyson Fury spin on it. Uh, Anthony Joshua is fighting Pulev this weekend. Basmo, are you excited for it? To be honest, not really. And I'll tell you why. Because everyone knows what we want to see. Joshua versus Tyson Fury. Everyone knows. Now, I know this is a mandatory challenge, but, like, I was even watching Sky Sports Boxing. I had, like, um, Tyson Fury's dad there. They were all discussing, like, who would win, Fury or Joshua. Like, that's the fight we want to see. So, like, yeah. I'm sort of like, Joshua, get this done and then get that fight done next year. Because, like, I feel like next year is going to be massive, not only for, like, it's just going to be massive. Like, so many people are just going to be, are going they're, they're not sitting around now. They're the board is sitting around. This year has been very, very paused. And uh, next year, it's like, I want to do this. I want to do this. So I think even ourselves, we're growing like very, very fast. And it's getting bigger. And, and mm-hmm. we're getting more excited now because now we're just really, really, really focused on the the combat scene. Like uh, I, I think I think now that we're, we've sort of solidified exactly what we're doing, obviously on the Instagram, we're pushing the rugby and the football. But like I think now that we're like right, we're solely focused on the MMA and the boxing. It's like it's it has re-energized me, you know. And then we're getting these great guests on, and it's just mm-hmm. like we know the path for next year. And also, I forgot to mention Ross, we're doing a massive competition. I think it's next week for two hundred euro cash, boxing gloves, pads, energized hoodie, energized T-shirt, wraps. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think well, I think that's more than enough. But yeah, yeah, more than enough. But uh, yeah, I'm not forgetting anything. But uh, that competition is going to be out next week. We're just get like we have all the stuff sorted. We just need. I to get sort of the... want one of those energized hoodies now that I've seen them. Now I know the people who are listening to this now haven't seen them yet. But when I saw them, I was like, oh, that hoodie's actually sort of cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be. I think next year it's just going to be massive for us as well. Like you know, it's it's. I can't. Not I can't wait. I can't wait. And you know, one thing that I do think is that with UFC Bell Tour. Eddie Hearn pushing the boxing, Frank Warren pushing his boxing. I feel that you have to bring your A game now. You can't yeah. bring sub subpar content or subpar fights because someone else put on a better fight somewhere else. That's and the thing, Ross. You, isn't you're it? competing for eyes, Ross. That's the thing. The way the UFC was cu- was competing with uh, the Mike Tyson fight, mm-hmm. like there's other options that like for instance, like I'll, I'll just let you know this week before, like obviously we're going to get into everything this week, but like uh, on Saturday. The boxing's on, UFC 256 is on, like on the Thursday, Bellator is on, and the Cage Warriors is on as well. Like, they're going to be competing. I know, it's actually crazy. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a weekend filled with sports to watch. And I love when there's big fights on. And Yeah, I know Joshua is fighting Pulev. It's not the fight we're looking for. But it's, I feel like it's the final chess piece that needs to be played before we get Tyson Fury, especially considering Dillian White lost. Therefore, like his mandatory is like pushed way back because he actually is going to do a, a rematch with Povetkin. And yeah. this is like the final piece of the puzzle. 
the final piece of the jigsaw until we get the biggest heavyweight boxing fight potentially of all time, if not definitely for the last decade. Yeah. I, I, so we're both saying that Joshua will win. Well, ho- hopefully, like, remember last time we were like, he'll batter Andy Ruiz, and then it was just like, what? <laughs> Who knows well, what happens in heavyweight boxing? I think Joshua's already training for Tyson Fury, so I think he'll be in the best shape of his career, and we'll probably see the best Anthony Joshua we've ever seen come fight night this Saturday. Yeah, that's the starting. Also, there's so much less distractions. I feel like for boxers, COVID has actually been almost a handy thing. Like, all you could do is focus on training. Like, there is no going out and partying and socializing. And, like, you're not going to these mad dinners that you're invited to or wherever else. You know what I mean? All you're doing is putting the head down and trying to be the best version of yourself you can be, which I think a lot of people who aren't professional boxers doing as well. Like, we're trying to do something similar ourselves in our own lives. So, yeah. I think Anthony Joshua will, will come out and be on fire this weekend, I'm sure. I'm hoping for a knockout. But uh, uh, also, shout out to Billy Joe Saunders, who won over the weekend as well. <clears throat> but yeah. Ross, we were talking about it with the lads, but we, we should get a bit more into depth about this, right? There's videos going everywhere about Jake Paul calling out Conor McGregor, okay? Um, for people that don't know, we obviously talked about it earlier. Jake Paul, massive on YouTube. His brother Logan Paul, massive on YouTube. Logan Paul fought KSI twice. Jake Paul now... He's after beating Nate Robinson there last week, and he was on ESPN MMA, uh, ESPN MMA, and yeah. he was he was saying that he's twenty three. Monday. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You watched it. Yeah, it was a great interview. To be honest, um, he he wants to. Like, he says he believes he'll fight Conor McGregor at some stage. His team are in talks with Conor McGregor's team. Jake Paul saying he's one of the biggest draws in boxing right now, and I, he, that can't really be argued, you know. Hmm. But uh, Ross, Jake Paul, he wants to fight Conor McGregor. Where, where do you sort of see this going? Because, like, he is, he's looking decent. Obviously, I don't believe Conor McGregor is going to fight him next, obviously. But mm-hmm. there was a possibility he was going to fight KSI. Now, Dylan Danis is there. What do you think is the right chess move to make? Because if he fights KSI, people will sort of look at him again, being like, oh, he's just doing the YouTube thing. But if he fights Dylan Danis, he's actually fighting proper uh, mixed martial arts or combat athletes. Well, I think if his end goal is to fight Conor McGregor, I think... One way of doing that is by fighting Dylan Dennis, beating his teammate. And I think that's definitely a great way because Conor McGregor's eyes will be on that fight. So therefore, if Conor McGregor is watching, there's no better time to call him out. And you know Conor McGregor, he, he likes when people call him out. And like he likes to respond to it. So uh, I think that fight will eventually happen. Jake Paul versus Conor McGregor. But I think it will you happen do. on Conor McGregor's terms um, when it suits him best. But, like, it's a massive day, payday for Conor. You know what I mean? Like, he, he sees that. And, sure, McGregor could fight in January and then fight Jake Paul in February. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying it will happen that soon, but I'm saying McGregor can show up any night of the week and beat Jake Paul, in my opinion. He's yeah. far too talented of a striker. So, I just think, he why not take a massive payday and fight Jake Paul? I think the only thing about it is it won't be one month that and the next month that because they'll want to build it up for about three or four months. Yeah, it's just so strange the entertainment scene. And that's why I love mm. covering mixed martial arts and boxing and just combat sports in general because all this is so interesting to mm. look at and discuss, you know. It's almost like the build up is the best part about all fights because after it happens it's, it, you know what I mean? It's like ready. Oh, it's, it's just so crazy. I, I think, yeah, I agree. I think that like you fight Dylan Danis first because like Dylan's Dan is, is just constantly chirping. Mm-hmm. And, like, it'd, be, it'd just be interesting to see him fight Jake Paul because even Errol Hawani was saying that, like, he thinks Jake Paul would beat him. Mm. So if that doesn't spark a fire under Dylan Danis' ass, nothing really will, will it? I don't think so. And I feel like Dylan Danis is such a troll and all he's doing is melting all the time. <laughs> I'd actually like to see him fight. He's had, what, like, two MMA fights? And yeah. talk as if he's like already the world champion. So, yeah, I want to see him actually compete. They're both J. Paul and Dylan Dennis. They're both sort of alike the way they uh, portray themselves. You know, so it'd be, mm. it, it, like it, it'd be very, 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 very interesting. You wonder like who would be on that card. Everything about it is just very intriguing, and it's just excitement and it's entertainment at the end of the day, Ross, isn't it? This is like oh, what we want to see. It's definitely entertaining one way or the other. 
we just want to be entertained. The people just want to be entertained. People that are watching this now, if you're enjoying this, make sure to like and subscribe because we're here every week, Ross. But uh, yeah, we just have to talk about that because Jake Paul versus Conor McGregor. I, if the money makes sense and it seems like a will, then where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a will, there is a way, Ross. Right, is there anything else you want to talk about in the, in the world of boxing before we get into mixed martial arts? No, I, I think that's I think that's it. I think we're on to UFC. I think we'll probably kick off with last night's UFC card. This is Sunday. I know normally we record on Monday, but today we're recording on Sunday. It suited the, the McKenna bros better. So here we are um, bringing you all our best content. But last night we saw Marvin Vittori win a unanimous decision over our mate, Jack Hermanson. Baz, this was a great performance by Vittori. He really got in there. Um, he showed an aggressive style, dropped Hermanson at one stage. Uh, I scored it actually three rounds to two to Vittori. Uh, I think the majority of people actually scored it four rounds to one. But look, there was no controversy here over the decision. Vittori's won, and he's probably stapled claim as top five middleweight in the UFC. Yeah, I know. Did you see, Did after, see after he called out Paolo Costa as well? Yeah, I don't think Marvin Vittori is afraid of anyone. And I also do think he gave Adesanya the best fight of anyone so far in the UFC. So, who knows? Maybe he's one win away from a title shot, which is maddening to think, considering if last week he was fighting, I think, Jack Ray Souza. Yeah. This week. You know what I mean? So, yeah, fair play to him. Yeah, that, that's the, just the crazy thing. If you don't take these chances... Dean, as Dean Barry said last week, he was like, if you don't take these chances, they... They surpass you. Yeah. You, you, it's, oh, man, it's just such a crazy thing. And look, it also very, very impressive because he was supposed to fight Jack Ray in a three-round fight and he went out there and went five rounds against um, Jack Hermanson, the top five UFC middleweight. Oh, I was very impressed by it, to be honest. Ross, we, like, I think we both agreed that we thought Jack Hermanson would give Adesanya like, a, a tough night. Mm, just, just, just how good he is at getting people down and stuff but uh, Vittori that, is like a little ball in there yeah um, that's, the, that's thing. the thing that's the thing he's a totally different physique he's a totally different fighting style to it but this card was riddled with COVID um, yeah. from start to finish but uh, we have to give a, a special shout out to is it Dolov is that, was that his name Roman Dol- Dolidze yeah Roman Dolidze I must say, I'm really enjoying watching these uh, Georgian fighters uh, fight recently. Very impressive. But uh, we shared it on our Instagram story. Him asking his coach halfway through the fight when he submitted him. I just thought it was very funny. I was, I was very entertained by it. He's did you, a, uh, one to watch out for. Did you see the fight between Jordan Lievit versus Matt Wyman? Oh, yeah. He's called the monkey something. That slam. Right. Do you want to explain what happened? So... Jordan had, or what's called, had Wyman like over his shoulder, and he sort of no, 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 it was, it was, he was like wrapped around. Well, him. he was wrapped around, but he was like over, the, over the shoulder here, and he, Wyman, Wyman, I think was going for a guillotine, uh, on him, and he sort of walked him over a bit towards the uh, cage, and then just went, gadoosh, and slammed him, and next thing you know, Wyman's out cold, but when he actually slammed him, he sort of forearmed him into the ground as well and it was in the first round wasn't it it was yeah. quite early on the fight I think it was the first 30 seconds or something. 22 seconds yeah so like there you go it was an incredible feat it was quite a bizarre knockout but he got 50 grand for his uh, for his performance as a night bonus it was very interesting he's undefeated as well that guy that's in the lightweight division Ross have you ever seen a finish like that the well I have I've definitely seen finishes like that like for not that early on in the fight and, and not that it was like such a strategic slam as well he yeah like sort of carried him over and then went gadoosh and slammed him it was very impressive it was very impressive but uh is there anything else in that courage you wanted to say before we move into this weekend um, 256 yeah I, I also thought jamal hill was very good uh against Owen saint peru so shout out to him he looks like someone who's gonna have to be looked at in the 205 pound division and you know oh. They need that. Owen St. Peru is sort of... I don't know, he seems to be sort of fading out, doesn't he? Yeah, but he's, he, he, he's always one of those people who you think is, you know, 
he's sort of done or whatever, and then he comes out with a big win. Uh, obviously, he's got that OSP von flu choke as well that he can always pull out of the bag at times. He also missed weight on this occasion, so it's yeah. bad on his behalf. That's true. Well, then, Ross, this weekend is UFC 256. It's been headlined by Debson Figueredo. He's taking on Brandon Moreno in, for the flyweight title. These two lads fought at UFC 255, so it was a fast turnaround for both men. Uh, Debson Figueredo is an absolute, what's he, a soldier of God as well, or a war machine, something like that? I think it's like Hands of Stone, no? I, th- I think it's something like something of God. Or Well, well I'll look him up there now. But um, yeah, this is actually the fastest turnaround ever for a fighter or a champion and a contender to fight for a UFC belt. And like you said, Basmo, these chances come around. Uh, God of War, that's what he's called. God of War, these yeah. Fu- these four, these so basically, basically, around. both nicknames I said just added together. Like. Yeah, <laughs> these these um, opportunities come around once in a blue moon, and sometimes you just have to jump at them. And both these guys jumped at them, especially if you look at someone like uh, Devs and Figueiredo. You know, he grew up in the slums of Brazil, and for him to, uh, well, actually, I wouldn't even call it slums. It was like the back arse of nowhere slums. And yeah, think about it, he made a big payday in his last fight, and they were like. How would you like to make that exact same payday again a month later? Obviously, he's going to go, yeah, thanks, no bother. Yeah. Although he does, you see, the thing is, it, I know it's a fast turnaround and we like to see that and that's great and all, like, especially for notoriety and people talking about you more. Like, for instance, look at Kazmat, uh, Chumaya. Mm. But, um, Devson Figueredo doesn't make the weight very easily. So, and then we've seen with Tony Ferguson before, he, like, cut down to make weight when he was fighting against Gaethje. And then that like seriously depleted him. Do you think this this is actually a really good idea, or uh, what are you sort of thinking about that? The way I look at it is, I actually think Figueredo finds it very hard to make weight when he has prolonged periods of time in between his fights. I feel like because he made the weight, and then he, he he basically accepted the next fight on the night. He didn't go off and have you know. Well, I hope he didn't go off and have like two pizzas that night and then be like, "Alright, grab <laughs> two like, two pizzas." Yeah, he knew he was like straight back on it. He knew he was straight back going into training camp as well. So at least if it, if he didn't know about the fight for another two weeks, he might have ate like a pig for a week or two afterwards. I'm sure a lot of fighters do. But he knew as soon as he left that octagon that he was probably going to fight again next month. Tony Ferguson, on the other hand, his fight was cancelled and he chose to make the weight. I think that's why people criticise him for that. So, Ross, who are you going for? Are you going for an and still? Or and new, or a draw. I actually am going for and still. I just look at him and just think he's an absolute monster. To be honest, he is, um, isn't he? I look at someone like Brandon Moreno, and look, he, he's lost five times. He's lost to Pantoja and Pettis, and their strikers. And um, Figueredo is a striker, so I can definitely see Figueredo getting knocked out in this. Moreno's never been finished, but has he ever fought someone as power, powerful? Of Devison Figueredo, I don't think so. So that's my pick. This is going to be such a random show, but do, do you know Family Guy that like that crazy monkey? Yeah, yeah. Devison Figueredo just reminds me of him. He's just like a crazy monkey. Like he is. He's he's he's, he's a tornado. He's Tasmanian devil. This guy is. He is. He's, he's like Peter Bell for him. One he is. He's, he's making there. And, he's making the flyweight division way more popular than uh, Henry Cejudo did as well, which is yeah. Very hard to Johnson. Yeah, but the thing is about Demetrius, I think I think like Henry brought it up a bit more, but Figueredo was made of. But, but the funny thing more. is, I was listening to Daniel Cormier and Errol Hawani talk about it, and they were like, "Yeah, but like these finishes he's doing." And I was like, "Yeah, but Mighty Mouse was doing like outrageous finishes as well. You know, know. Like, takedowns with like armbar transitions in mid air, and you know, he was like he finished Henry Cejudo with knees. I think he was actually too nice as opposed to Figueredo was almost a bit of a bad boy, and I think people liked that. Yeah. Uh, Ross down in the co-main event Tony Ferguson taking on Charles Oliveira in the lightweight division Charles Oliveira has been on a tear recently Tony Ferguson's coming in, in after that loss to Justin Gaethje what are you sort of expecting here and do you think if Tony Ferguson wins he has an opportunity to fight for the lightweight title next year for me I actually think there could be an upset in the cards here I really why is that like, I, I really like the role that Charles Oliveira is on at the moment and I feel like Tony Ferguson takes some massive risks in his fighting style. And I think against Charles Oliveira, I don't think he can take those risks. You know what I mean? Like at certain stages, um, Kevin Lee had Tony Ferguson's back in their fight. 
I think if you give your back to Charles Oliveira, you might not get it back. Um, he he's I think the most submissions in UFC history, which you know says a lot. I know yeah. um, Tony Ferguson's a black belt under Eddie Bravo, and like that's incredible as well. Edgy bra, but, <laughs> but he, he does do a lot of risks. And if I had to pick a winner, I'm going to pick Charles Oliveira on this time. I don't know where Tony Ferguson's at, uh, and he also I wasn't impressed during the Gagey fight. Didn't really have the ability to change it up when it wasn't going his way. So I, I feel like Charles Oliveira is on the up and up. And who knows whether Tony Ferguson has it in him to go to a war like that again. Also, Dev said this fight isn't five rounds. Uh, yeah. I Tony Ferguson, like in the Gagey fight, he just seemed like he wasn't going to change the way he was fighting. Mm. And, like I believe there is a plan B and plan C within him. But I think mm. he was like, no, I'm, I'm going... Yeah, I'm not. I think, he thought, I think he thought Justin Gaethje's build was gonna break. And yeah, he never did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Tony Ferguson. This one, Ross. Just, uh, I think he's bigger. I, t- I think he's just better on the feet. It's it's gonna be very interesting if his the deck. Let's see what happens. But uh, I'm gonna go with Tony Ferguson in this. Uh, Ross, Kevin Holland is also on this card taking on Jack Ray Souza. Kevin Holland was actually meant to fight just there yesterday, and now he's moved to this card. Huge opportunity for Kevin Holland. Yeah, massive uh, opportunity from, you know, getting to fight a, a perennial contender uh, in the UFC middleweight division. Look, I actually think this is going to be potentially a harder fight for him than the Hermanson fight. Cause I do Why is that? Like Herman- I felt like Hermanson would have actually kept him on the feet, kept it on the feet for a while. He would have exchanged. I feel like Jack Ray is going to want to take him down straight away yeah. and try, try and submit him. Uh, he is one of the best jiu-jitsu black belts of all time. Although... Then again, you know, in the last sort of ten fights, Jack Ray's fallen in love with his hands. He's 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 felt one or two knockouts and, and he loves that. But I think Jack Ray, if I was Jack Ray, I'd do what got me to the dance and I'd have Kevin Holland on the ground as soon as I could and I'd try and wrap up some sort of submission. I don't think Kevin Holland can match him on the ground and he's already lost twice by submission. And if he's lost by submission going into fight Jack Ray Souza, I think that's a weakness that's gonna be shown. So you're going for? I'm going to go Jack Ray by submission. I'd love to see Heaven Holland win, but I'm going to go Jack Ray by submission. I, I tell you, I, I, there's something about Kevin Holland. He's uh, very, very interesting. Like, like he's not even in, is, is he even ranked? He doesn't even have a rank here from. But, but I don't like, think so. It, but he is very, very, like, he is most, most watched TV. Came off the Contender Series, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, right, he could potentially fight Vittori next if he wins. Um, mm. Another thing is Yoel Romero's after leaving the UFC as well, Ross. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's opened up a ranking spot. Look, Yoel Romero's, what, 42 or something now? Now, all time, one of the best bods in UFC, still to this date. Like, the, the fella's an absolute freak in age. But he also got that massive pay settlement from the tainted supplements. I think he got $27 million or something at the time. So, at the end of the day, like Yo Romero didn't need the bunny, I'm sure. He's probably he comes across sometimes as not the easiest character to deal with. And he's already lost to Adesanya, so they probably just went, you know what? We can let him go. So apparently there's gonna be a few more to be let go. Uh, obviously with COVID as well. You know, I mean I didn't see him fight over the COVID, I didn't see him have any fights lined up. Maybe he was refusing the fight during this time and you see we're just like, you know what? We'll let you go. Yeah, Dana so, said he's gonna be cutting uh, like a lot more fighters, so that's Let's watch this space. Mm. But uh, Ross, Yoel Romero, what a career in the UFC. But what is your favorite moment from Yoel Romero's career? Uh, Putting you on the spot now, bud. Probably Stoolgate would definitely be up there. <laughs> uh, but if I had to pick something, probably the knockout with Chris Weidman. That knee was just like... Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it, it was reminiscent of like an Nganu versus Overeem. It was just like, it was like, and that's all she wrote. I you mean, oh. you're like shoveling the carcass up off the canvas. You were. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, shoveling the carcass. Uh, my favorite moment, Ross. Thanks for asking. Get me back for earlier. But uh, is when he tells Michael Bisbing he loves him. <laughs> I know <love> you, Mike. <laughs> well, yeah, what, what? You said it weirdly, though, didn't you? you like, yeah. yeah. I'll see you soon, boy. I love I will, you. I love you. But. Uh, Ross, also on this card, Junior Dos Santos is taking on Cyril Gain. Cyril Gain is a rising star for France. 
Junior de Santos. Like, Junior, this is good. This was meant to be. This was booked a while ago, wasn't it? For a different card, and now it's on this it one. Me, I think it was meant to be main event as well. You know that? Yeah. Um, Junior Santos. See, with Junior Santos, right? He's sort of like any time you ever chalk, chalk him out. You know, when he comes back, like I remember when he beat Derek Lewis and when he beat Tai Tui Vasa, I was like, oh, I think they're going to knock him out. His chin's gone. And then next thing you know, there he is. His boxing is so good. Yeah. So this is the and his dancing, and his dancing. But this is a great lit- litmus test for uh, Cyril Gain. I'm going to pick Cyril Gain to win by knockout. I think Junior Santos has uh, had his time, and he's lost his last three to Blades, Rosenstrike, and Ngannou. Like there's some scary men he's fighting, and I think Cyril Gain is going to be the fourth scariest man on the list to potentially end Junior Santos's career. Jeez. When you say it that way, it sounds really harsh. <laughs> yeah, it does. I see. We've said before, like Junior Dos Santos is like he's been hit so many times in the head that like we don't know if he should keep going. So like, I mean, yeah. imagine another knockout. Like he's like this is gonna sound really bad, and for whoever's listening, I don't like I don't mean any offense, but like if anyone is gonna get CTE, it's gonna be Junior Dos Santos. Like, if, yeah, if, especially if those, I think ever since he lost to Kane the second time, I think people were asking for him to hang them up. It's been like, yeah. no more, no more. Yeah. Well, uh, Ross, like uh, the, some other fights on, this, on the undercard are uh, are must watch as well. Like Cubs Watson's fighting, Kenzie Durham's fighting, um, Tisha Torres is fighting, Angela Hill as well. And then also in the early prelims, who do we have here? Our mate Billy Quarantillo's fighting. And then there's someone else here, uh, Lee Jing, uh, Jing Liang as well. And then Chase Hooper, Ross, Ben Askren's son. Yeah, the curtain jerker for the entire evening. Uh, look, he, he was, I think, fought Alex Caceres in his last fight, wasn't it? And he was outraged, the outclass on the feet. So hopefully he's been working on his striking. Uh, I think he's got the fame then, so he was a, a comedy act. So, uh, you know, I meant to actually say, Dean Barry and him fought in the same Hard and tight and FC. Is it, yeah? Which is a random fact for you, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so that's Saturday night. Like, I can't wait to check that out. Uh, Ross, also on Thursday, uh, it's Bellator. It's yeah. Bellator 254. It's been headlined by Alima Leigh McFarland. She's taken on Juliana Velasquez. Uh, Alima Leigh McFarland is 11 now, and Juliana Velasquez is 10 0. What are you expecting for this one, bud? I'm oh, sorry, you hit the uh, lock, locked out the door there. Um, I expect Elena McFarland to stand still. Yeah, same here. Good. Yeah, so then, like, Magomed, Magomedov is on this card as well, Ross. 16 and 1. He's actually got a big reputation. And, um, like, I remember Josh Thompson was saying that he's, like, he was over the moon that Magomed, Magomedov signed with the UFC. I <laughs> uh, signed with Bellator. Yeah, he, he really does. And with a name like that, you can never forget him because it's the same name twice. <laughs> <laughs> Magomed, Magomedov. Yeah, but look, the Russians, uh, the Dagestani Russians are looking as scary as ever. And I'm very interested to see where they where they go. It's like them and the Georgian fighters at the moment, I think, are looking very, very scary these days. Yeah. Anyone with that beard, that Dagestani beard, you're just like, I think he'll be good. Yeah. Then, Ross, obviously, before we wrap things up, it, Cage Warriors Trilogy is back this week. It's on Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. It's taking place in York Hall in London. Um, just looking at this card on Thursday night, it's being held out by Luke Shanks versus, versus Jack Hadley for the Flyway title. Um, that should be a good scrap. That should be a good scrap. Yeah, then on Friday night, it's being headlined by Frederick versus Richardson. Frederick for the middleweight title. Yeah, Frederick defeated James Webb from Team KF. Uh, Frederick he fights out of sorry, what's the Birmingham Renegade, Renegade. Team Renegade. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then Saturday night is the biggest night of them all. To be honest, for us, like it's been well, it's the biggest game. night for us anyway. Well, like I think well, they're, they're, it each night is building mm-hmm. up towards this Saturday yeah. night because it's it's right before UC two fifty six, so a lot of eyes be on this as well. And we'll uh, be it, on YouTube. Uh, maybe the pro prelims. I'm not 100 mm. percent sure right now, but it's being sh- the main event. The main card is being shown on UC Fight Pass. Uh, it's being held on by Morgan Charrier versus Perry Goodwin for the featherweight title. Also, Argo made and, and uh, Argo made Paul Hughes is fighting. Uh, he's taking on Jordan. In the contender fight. 
for the number one contender fight in the featherweight division, which is huge. Ian Gary's taking on Lawrence Tracy in the welterweight, and uh, John McCulgan's fighting Kieran Lister in the lightweight. Uh, let's see, who, uh, Will Curry as well. He's one to watch yeah. out for in the middleweight division. Uh, Ross, like, that, that, what, you have to, what do you think about that card, man? This is a huge night for Ian, huge night for Paul, huge night for Joe. Yeah, I, I, I'm very much looking forward to Saturday night, and especially uh, Will Curry as well. I think there's someone who's going to be uh, a, a, a big, um, big name in years to come. Especially, he's actually an avid chess player. And I mean, like the actual game of chess, that just makes me think like he's very intelligent and like he will take his opponents apart piece by piece. So I'm very interested to see those guys fight. Yeah. Also, Clan Wars may be on today, but it's after being rescheduled for next week due to some problems with the hotel and the location. Yeah. So if it is rescheduled, then it does go ahead. Uh, I felt very bad for the fighters because we got told, but like 12, 14 hours notice. Yeah. yeah they had, yeah, they had, like, they don't wait in, may wait and everything, man. Crazy. Yeah. So uh, I'll be interested to see what that is. I wonder will there be any uh, leeway given to the fighters that you know they can weigh five pounds heavier or something along those lines. I feel like something like that should should happen for them. Um, but we'll we'll make sure if it is happening, we will make sure to shout them out when it does go down. Is it next Sunday then? Yeah. Grant. Yeah, but, uh, but just um, just a couple no, of more just a couple of more things before we wrap things up, Rashi. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, next week. Canelo's going to be fighting Smith. Uh, Edwards was meant to be fighting Shmoyev. That fight, fight's after falling off as well, Ross. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what the story is there. But for the people that are here right now, there is a hu- we are running a huge competition next week. Like myself and Ross want to give back to the people that tune mm-hmm. in for the stuff. And we're going to be announcing the winner on our YouTube channel and stuff. So just make sure to subscribe. But Ross, before we wrap things up, I want you to tell a story about a photograph. Look at this photograph. Um, so uh, Barry actually said he rang me on was it Saturday morning Saturday, Saturday morning, morning yeah. really early like half eight in the morning very bad morning. but I get up at seven so no I waited till ten okay anyway he rang me I missed the call so I rang him back and he goes oh will you do me a favour he goes if you're around will you pick up a, a photo a photo I got a photo framed uh, of my ma what's it called for her birthday he goes I'll pick up a photo in this shop and it's just like and then he told me where it was. I think it was Mark Nixon's his name of the place in Trump Park. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, yeah, no bother. And he goes, right, well, make sure you do it today because I think they're closed on Sunday and Monday. And I was like, that, that's fine, Grand, I'll do it. So then I, I arranged to go pick up the photo or whatever. And um, I ring Baz, let me know I'm on the way. I go, I'm going to get that. And then I leave my ma's for me because um, my ma's house is like in between my house and Baz's house. And um, Barry has free reign there anyway. Yeah, he can come and go as he pleases. So uh, I got to the shop, right? And your mom was on the phone as I got to the shop. Yeah. I'll be in action. He was there. Right. And he actually, actually let me in. Yeah. That was me on the phone. Yeah. I know. Yeah, man. I talk, right. Am I telling the story? You telling the story. Right? Oh, man. Right. So then I, I get off. What's it called? I'm actually getting a bit impatient, Baz. Surprise, surprise, right? Because I can see him on the phone and I'm like, do not let me in, though. <laughs> it's freezing outside, right? Yeah, it is freezing outside, isn't it? Yeah, it's so, yeah. so cold. It's yeah, it's crazy, today. Ridiculous. And then uh, he lets me in, whatever. And he, he, he's real nice. I was a bit like, oh, fuck, he's actually really nice. So I can't be annoyed at him for leaving me out in the cold, right? <laughs> and then he goes, I go, I have to pick something up for Barry Moore. So I, think it's a, I actually go, I think it's a frame picture of his mom. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom's there laughing, right? And then he hands me the frame and he goes, he goes, oh, he goes, you should probably check it before I go. Just make sure it's all right. And I was like, oh, I was sort of going, all right. Well, what way did he hand it to you? In a bag. Oh, it was in a bag. So, yeah, it was, so it was in his bag. And then I, I was like, check it. I was like, like I don't know whether it's going to be right or wrong. I mean, <laughs> he would. And I looked at, and then it was this actually like gorgeous photo of uh, me, Jade, and Theo at Theo's first birthday, and it was actually such a lovely uh, frame as well. So uh, I put it up on the old Instagram story there yesterday. So if any of you guys follow me on my personal page, you probably would have seen it. Uh, but it was actually just a really lovely touching gift. And then I actually got in back in the car and I actually rang Jade straight away and like Jade was like that's actually incredible it's so nice and then I rang Baz because he's always doing nice things for people he's a bit of a gent like that and uh, there's been a few lads who have uh, received football jerseys over the last month that, that Baz has sent out them just to add a bit of Christmas cheer in their life well it wasn't even about Christmas that's no, it was more birthday Baz, Baz is so lovely fella and then shout out to Ross Marmody who got engaged uh, over 
I was going to say the course of the week. Absolute legend, delighted for him. Yeah. He, so he, that's listens, what I, he listens to this podcast from the most obscure place out of anyone who listens to the show from the Turks and Caicos. I think they have a population of 40,000 people. Yeah. Shout out to Johnny McGuire as well, who's a big fan of the show. But, but uh, yeah, so like we are doing, like, just, just adding on to that, we're going to be doing a massive competition, giving away loads of stuff for people who want to even do, for like the, the boxing and stuff, the money, like, even if you don't, aren't a fighter, but you enjoy just like hitting pads and stuff. This mm. stuff is brand new. It's Adidas. It's, yeah. it's with Foy Store. Uh, mm. Foy, how, how Foy Store Media. Foy Store Media. Yeah. So it's yeah. going to be unbelievable. We can't wait to do it. It's, it's, it's just, it makes you feel so good to do, com- like, to do the show and then to actually be able to give something back as mm. well. Is just, uh, yeah, it's but also really you, you could enter it to win one part of the prize and then give the other prize as a present to someone. You know yeah. what I mean? And the money as well, man. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. We're rolling in it. We're rolling in it. But uh, right. the, the, yeah, so Ross, and else to say? No, just if you are watching this far, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and as always, stay energized.